So here we are. Uh, we're at 23519 right now. And uh, Mark, you wanted to go over the pledges. I try to keep it really simple for folks this time because I know, you know, for some people it can get confusing. It does. Hey, it confuses me sometimes. So the pledges are, if Mo would scroll up a little bit, there is the pledge for just the appreciated supporter, and that gets you into the Kickstarter. It'll get you into the pledge manager after the Kickstarter so you can order things. Then there is the early bird pledge. The early bird pledge that gets you the base game plus all of the stretch goals. Under that, you'll see the standard pledge, which after the early bird pledge is gone, that'll be the way to get the game. And that gets you just the base game and all the stretch goals. Same as the early bird pledge, just a little bit more expensive. The early birds get a slight Warm. discount, show of appreciation. <laughs> then you get the standard pledge plus, which is a standard pledge plus the $45 expansion alone in the mountains. And then underneath it, all gone, you'll see is the early bird pledge plus the solitaire. That's uh, that's all, all alone in the mountains. So, yeah. Yeah. That's it. So, Very simple Kickstarter. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the Alone in the Mountains, for those who don't already know, this is the base game. And then Alone in the Mountains is going to be the solitaire version where you actually will play solitaire specific uh, scenarios. That'll be different than the two player because it's created for solitaire only. Yep, exactly. And it'll use an improved version just because over time I've had some other ideas and and fixed any mistakes of the same thing alone in the jungle that we did for 65. Now, anything that you fixed with that, is that also going to reflect in alone in the jungle? Is that going to somehow be available as a PDF download or something like that, like changed rules or anything adjusted for that? No. Or nothing, nothing okay. will affect that game. Okay. Maybe sometime. Who knows? Okay. All right. Well, I just wanted to make sure that we had that in there for everybody who has not already pledged. And if you have not, go hurry up and do so because there is time left. We have 20 days to go. You can get all the extra stretch goals and the base game, or you can get the base game and the solitaire expansion. So hopefully that will help you guys out now that Mark's explained it to you. And yes, there is also going to be international shipping now, correct? There is. Absolutely. We'll be shipping to England, the European Union, Australia, New Zealand, and of course, Canada. Things were crazy wacky uh, when Brexit happened, and that's why we stopped shipping overseas. We have a partner to work with us now uh, that makes it much more feasible. So we'll see how it goes with this Kickstarter. Looking forward to it. Okay, so here's the scoop, Mo. The name of the scenario is Hammer and Anvil. The description is frequently the Soviets would set up a blocking position with mechanized troops. The mechanized part of that's gone now. And then insert Spetsnaz to attempt to herd the Mujahideen into a trap. So you set up first in any hex in row columns E, F, and G on board five. Okay. Now, what you're going to try to do is, and, and the people you have up here are who you get. You get two victory points for every unit that is west of this hex row right here. So okay. west of row G and is no longer in a non-shaken Soviet unit site. Okay. All right. You get one victory point. For every Soviet unit you kill, you need eight victory points to win. That's it. I don't get victory points. Only you get victory points. Well, you invaded my country, damn it. That's you don't right. get That's victory points. I don't get it. That's exactly right. Now, I set up first. No, you set up first. Oh, yeah, I set up first, bad. yeah. Yep. Okay. Now, do you know these, <clears throat> what the concealed markers do? Why don't you explain it to the audience? Hi, audience. I'm Mark. What these concealed markers do is only the Mujahideen have them. And you can place them on Mujahideen units in a hex. 
when they're under a concealed marker, if I fire on them with direct fire, only a gold or red hit on the card that you draw, you draw cards to mm-hmm. resolve fire, actually hits. Now, artillery or mortar fire will still hit on green. And additionally, when you're uh, in a hex with a concealed marker and you fire out of that hex, you hit on red or green, not just green. Okay. So they're very powerful. Now, I can, the way I get concealed markers off of you is one of two ways. If I move adjacent to you, if any non-shaken unit is adjacent to the concealed marker at the end of its impulse, the concealed marker is removed. Or if any unit in the hex actually moves, the concealed marker is removed. And that's it. There are two events in this scenario too, and they come up whenever you're filling your hand, except on the first draw, and you pull an event card. It doesn't matter if you pull the event that favors me or the one that favors you. The one that favors you let you lets you pull any administrative markers off of one stack of units, two units. So you could theoretically have three units in a hex, and then it lets you fast move them, which means their normal movement plus one. Mm-hmm. My event marker simulates me getting a hind strike so it does a five hef attack on one hex are you ready to set up how how familiar yes, are you you're you know the rules more or less. yeah it's it's uh two per hex three if you have a leader and then you can have one vehicle in the hex too but there's no vehicles for me so I don't no vehicles none eight rifles and rpd and then two leaders okay now, you notice each one of them has a different power. Some of them have abilities. Okay, so the one uh, that has, it looks like shells. I'm talking about in the center. Mm-hmm. The one that has shells, that's called intensive fire. If you play a power, uh, that will add one to that squad's firepower. It's called resiliency. If you play a power card, it functions like a light wounds card. So it lets you ignore a hit. This one is your concealed. If that unit can play, can as long as it's in any type of terrain with cover, it can play a power card to put a concealed marker on it. Now the icons or abilities on the left-hand side for this rifle unit, the bayonet means that it can enter close combat. The F means it's a fanatic. And the fanatic means that you can play any card as a rally card. That's that black F. And all these powers and abilities, the abilities are on the left-hand side of the counter. The powers are down in the center, are explained on that card that I'm looking at and that Uva was just referencing. Okay, all set. All right. I'm all set. So now what we do is... In this particular scenario, you get five cards. I get four per turn. Okay. I just drew an event card. A couple of words. So did I. When you draw them in this initial hand, it does not count. Okay. You put them over in a discard. But in reality, when you're playing this with the physical copy of the game, you take the event cards and the end turn cards out of the deck before you give the before you do this drawing. Now we're going to determine initiative. And the way we do that is, is that we will choose one of these cards in our hand. And then we will put it face down somewhere in the middle of the table and flip them over and compare the number that's in the lower left-hand side. The person with the higher initiative discards the card that he played for the initiative and moves first, gets to play first. Uh, The person that lost the initiative puts the card they bid back in their hand. All right, so we flip them. Uses four, mine's eight. Okay, Okay, first thing. Uh oh, what's he doing? For giggles, I'm going to play fire and uh, I'm going to fire the 
the two units in this hex right here. Okay, there's the RPK-74. Yep. There's Remember the rifle. Can... Now, the, the number that was in the middle of those units is the firepower. So I have two plus two is four. I'm going to shoot. I'm going to fire here against this rifle unit. Anybody okay. else in that hex? Nope, just that rifle nope. unit. I am one, two, three, four, five, six hexes away. Uh, I'm going to use the RPK as the lead unit. So I get two from that, two from the rifle. That's a total of four. But Mo is in this building here, so he gets a one defense, which is subtracted from my firepower which brings him down to three. Okay. Then I go over here and I pull three cards. Um, and we look at the bottom right of the card. And what I want to see is a green hit. So I pull it. Uh, Ruby. Nope. No green hit there. It's a red hit there. Doesn't count for anything. But if I was concealed, that would have counted. Yes, it would have counted. But green hits are way more common than red hits. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got it. I got a green hit there. So one hit on him. He is shaken unless you have a light wounds in your hand that you can play. Let's see. No, I do not. All right. So that one hit makes him shaken. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Now it's your go. Your impulse. All right. So I get to draw a card. Yep. And, oh no, it's a little too late now. Because <laughs> now I got light wounds, but that's good for later. Right, uh, it's good for later. So... With the command ops that you guys are seeing right here, uh, Mo gets to draw a card, and then he can do two actions. Command ops are very strong cards. Okay. So you get go ahead, draw an extra card. Did you do it? I did. I did. Oh, yeah. That was the a, that was the light yeah. wounds card. Yeah. Yep, I got you. You still have to play a card for the actions yes. you take. Yeah, I'm gonna go. This one. Yep, they're both. That's what I wanted to make sure. So, all right, do that again. I like to change change the interpretation of the rules to suit myself usually. <laughs> That's what I figured. <laughs> all right, so one, two, three. And I get plus one for the fast move. So mm -hmm. four to there. Yeah. You get one more action. I think I'm going to hold these cards I've got. So I'll just call it done at that point okay yep and audience if you like you can uh, discard two cards at the end of every impulse and one of the one of the tactics is if you want the turn to end sooner like i do since i'm defending is you <laughs> do those tricks you do everything you can to to run through the deck as quickly yes. as possible because the turn will end after we've pulled the fourth end turn out of the deck. All right, my go. Yes, sir. Your go. Okay. Um, so you fill your hand at the beginning of your turn mm -hmm. to four cards. So I'm going to draw it twice. I pulled an end turn. I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, I'll put it out here. Whenever you pull an end turn, that just goes off to the side. It could go right there. That's fine. Yeah. Um, so I will bring these three dudes. Uh -oh. One. Two, three, and they will go to here. Yeah. Nice. So if you had a fire card, mm -hmm. you could shoot. 
I could. Let's see. Does a you didn't have to be if they're concealed, they could still shoot, correct? Oh, absolutely. Matter of fact, they even get a bonus. Nice. They hit okay. on green or red. Let's show the audience at home. These guys. Cool. All right. So we have one, two, so it's uh, four actually on the fire. And you are more than that. More than that. I, I really that was a stupid move, but it gets them to see the butchery. Okay, so so it would be two, three, four, and because the you have to choose one of the units to lead, you would choose the RPD. Mm -hmm. It's within two hexes, so it also gets a bonus for range. So that's up to five. I'm moving, so uh, you get one more, so that's up to six, but I'm on a hill, and you're firing from a lower level, so it goes back down to five. So you draw five cards, and you hit on red or green. That was a really stupid move on my part. So we draw five cards. Five. All right. So Looking one. for green or red hits in the bottom right. Nope. One hit. One hit. Two hits. Two hits. That was a vehicle. That'll be good. <laughs> three hits. Three hits. Look at you. You shook all three of them. Nice. It's not nice. It sucks. It's nice. All right. I put a shaking marker on all of them. Oh, and... Oh, by the way, <laughs> I needed to play a move card for that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would help. There it is. Okay, so you played your move card. Yep, and it's your go. All your right. turn. And now, do I draw back up to five or four only? No, you always drive up to draw up to five. Okay, that's, that's how I was just making sure it wasn't like a first turn scenario. thing or something. Okay, cool. Why don't we... Nope, I can't see them from here. The only one I could see was these guys. Mm -hmm. Can I say something while you're thinking? Sure, go for it. Okay, guys that are looking, you, you, you can tell you're all war gamers. You can tell these are hills. The triangles on the hills denote the height. So you don't have to worry, oh, is that a, you know, a one or a two or whatnot? Green level zero is the non-hill with no triangle. Level one has the green triangle. Level two has the beige, yellow, whatever you'd like to call it. And level three over here is the red triangle. Okay, so that is important also for movement, correct? Yeah, when you go up a hill, you have to pay mm -hmm. plus one. And these, um, these tiles, the game comes with terrain tiles, so you can also kind of uh, you can change the boards. These mm -hmm. tiles here only change the terrain underneath them, not the height underneath them. So that sure. was rough level one. It's still level one, but it's but clear. it's clear. Okay. All right. I'm gonna go with the move. All right. And I'm gonna move this guy. One, two. Hold on. He's got three, so it'll be three. Yeah. So three. Okay, I drew another end turn. Oh, by the way, oops. Over here, these guys that are shaken mm -hmm. uh, should also be complete. marked. Ops complete. If somebody moves, they're marked with a move marker, okay? Mm -hmm. they're, if, they're, if they're still considered to be in the act of moving, so if you were to shoot at them, you get plus one. We're all familiar with that. But the thing is, is if you've been shaken, that moved marker is taken off and the ops complete is put on there to signify that they just hit the ground. You no longer get a plus one if you're shooting on them. So that's why I did that. Okay. Command ops. So 
Woo, it worked. Draw one. And... So I draw a card. Bam, bam, bam. And I can do two. Two things. I'm going to play a fast move, but not use its full capabilities. I'm going to move. This is a whole hex of dudes right here. Here we go. Hex okay. of dudes. Selecting them all. They come in one, two, three, and stop right there. Okay. They're moved. That's my first action for my command ops. I don't have a second action, but I will discard two cards. There we go. All right, you're go, Mo. So here's the interesting thing about these cards is I'm flipping through them so that way people at home can see. The options you have, you have two different options, and some of them are really difficult to to make because you're like, man, if I do this, I give up the other action that I can't use in that card. So that's the fun thing is trying to see how you want to do the card play. It's, a, it's a definitely a give and take. That is what I think is one of the fun parts of the game. I enjoy that. I'm going to throw that out there. Draw a card. Okay. All right. So then I'm going to move. Actually, before I do that, let me do this. Take that off there. So with the leader having a four movement there on the bottom right, 4L is for leg movement. The others have three. That automatically motivates the troops to go to the leader speed. So that's one. Whoops. Two, three. Half hexes are good, right? Yep. Okay, four. So then I get another action. Yeah, you do. Uh, so you can either move or fire, but you can't move and fire unless you have a move and fire card. Correct. So let's do this. Why not? Let's go and fire with these guys at these guys again. It's it's one of the units. Only one mm -hmm. can fire again. So you so, want to use the RPD. RPD is going to be the one I use. So that's two firepower. Mm -hmm. You're within two hexes, so that's an additional firepower up to three. The card itself says you get an additional firepower. That's up to four. And then I'm on the hill, so I only um, – so that's minus one. So you have three HEF. Yep. So I'm just pulling him out to show that he's the one who's firing the RPD. So three – Miss. Hit. Hit. So one of them is hit. You get to choose which one, but it can't be the hero unless there's nobody else in there. And they're both, the other two are both the same, so it doesn't matter. But yeah, the just, rule is you would get to choose. Yeah, just pick one of the Spats Nats units. Yep. He's now reduced. All right, so that's it. I'm done. All right, Over to you. I can play this reload and fire. Oh, and just I'm like gonna, I did. I'm going to fire my RPK at this guy, the initial target, so it's Two plus one is three. Minus one because you're in the building. Mm -hmm. So I get to draw two. Nice. Oh, he hits. Is he second card? He hits. That guy is definitely done dancing. Tote. Tote's dead. <laughs> okay. An ops complete. Like that, mm -hmm. like that, like so, and 
I will discard two. Bam. I will do that. So I'm going to do the reinforcements, play this card, draw another card, and it does yep. not count as an action. So I will draw. Huh. And that is not going to do me much good right now. I can pass too, so I will pass. Mm -hmm. I'll pass, and that, end, that ends, ends the ends turn. A turn. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so who had the initiative? You did. All right, I don't have, in my reserve phase, I don't have anybody to move. Uh, so it goes to your reserve phase, and you don't have anybody that can move. Nope. So we pull off the administrative markers and... Real quickly, while we're pulling those off, why don't you explain the reserve move? Sure. Sure. Uh, in the reserve phase, uh, any eligible unit can move if it's a uh, uh, can move up to three movement points if they're not within three hexes of an enemy unit. If they are within three hexes of an enemy unit, they can move one. There's no combat. There's no shooting. You can't close assault. That's it in a uh, in a nutshell, if you want to keep a card, you keep a card. Otherwise, you discard it. I'm going to draw four. You draw five, Mo. Initiative. Yes. Okay. I've got a 10. I'm going to play a fire card, use the RPD from here against these guys here. So I have two, it's just straight up two. It's spraying fire, so it will be evenly distributed through the hex. The first one is event, and it's only when you're filling your hand. So that goes over to the discards. One hit, two hits. So two of them are shaken. In those instances, it's randomly determined. We have a D6, don't we? We're rolling for the one that's not shaken. One to okay. two is the top one, or one to two is here, three to four, five to six. Three. So he's the guy that is not shaking these six. two are. Actually, it's a roll of six. He's the guy that's not shaking these two are. Okay, so I'll play that one. One, two, three. Correct? Yes, exactly. Okay, I got an end turn. I'll play Punishing Fire with this rifle against this mm -hmm. guy. Mm -hmm. Punishing Fire. Uh, I get to fire a single eligible unit. I fire twice. The target may be retreat between the attacks. So he has a two firepower. Um, and you are moving. So that goes up to three. You're two hexes away. So that's close range. So it goes up to four. So I'm going to be drawing four cards as I send you to your death. Two cards. Ha! No, three cards. Read the read the small trend. Uh, or one from okay from the enemy's targeting draw, or minus one from their ATF. The F, okay. So three cards. His first one. Bam! One hit. Second one. Not a hit. Third one, it is a hit, and an end turn. So he is shaken and reduced. One or both units? 
Oh, are there two units there? There's two units. Yeah, that's why I say like they're both shaking, correct? No, I'll shoot. I'll shoot at the intensive fire guy. This this guy here. Okay. All right. Are you done? I am maybe close to done. Let me see. Let's play the move. And actually move this out of the way here. So I'm going to move these guys. One, two, three. I don't like that. I do have a command ops. So nice. I'm going to play that, put it right in there. We all know I've played it. I'm going to draw another card. Okay, I'll play a second wind on the RPK. So that pulls off that fired marker there, much to your chagrin. Mm -hmm. And I will order my second trick. <laughs> I will play a bloodlust. On that dude. Get over here. What? Yeah. So the Spetsnaz guy that's not shot? Guy that's not shot is not even not even shaking anymore. All right. That was two actions. I know y'all okay. want to know if I'm going to also... Nope. I'm not going to discard. Back to you, Mo. Drawing in oh, turn. Right. Go ahead. And I draw. And then turn. No, I do not. Is it? No. Nope. Do not. Okay. All right. Now That's we got it all neat. squared away. Kind of neat. <laughs> neat enough. All right. I'll play reinforcements here. Draw another card. And I will play this as a move card and move my RPK to there. Okay. And flip this puppy, put it up there. And you're go. All right. So that second wind comes off, or the move comes off because he gets second wind. Uh huh. This guy here. It only comes off one unit. I can't tell how many you have there. Remove them. Uh, okay. From one unit. All right. So there we go. All right. I'll play Let's Get Them, but I'm only going to move one hex of units. Not him. He's not moving. These guys are going to move back to there. Okay, well, I got an event two. You just drew an event two? Yeah. So, event two is attack helicopter. Attack one <laughs> hex of Mujahideen units with five HEF. Utilize the spring fire ability. So, the hex I will attack, who all's in here? Let me see that. Oh, you got, yeah, you got a lot, but, um, nope. I will attack this hex right here. So, I get five HEF against them, and here I go. So, you out there in the uh, the audience, if there are events, which is something new to uh, this uh, game series, and when you pull one when you're filling your hand, as Mo just did, you read what event it is and then carry out the event. In this case, the event is, is a hind helicopter pops up over the ridge and starts 
throwing cannon shells at these guys. So I get five draws. Miss. Miss. One hit. Two hits. Three hits. And then the event card is is gone, discarded. Okay. Then draw another card. End turn. And it is the end turn. Okay. Because it takes four to end the turn in this game. Mm -hmm. This scenario. Okay. I will discard those two. I'm just discarding two. Okay. I'm going to discard two. And Okay. My go? Yeah, go ahead. So your go. Now I get all these cards that I would love to have at other times, but not doing me any good with, uh, if I'm moving. Why not? Let's do this. Fast move. I have to, the, to instigate a, a close assault, you have to have that ability okay. right there, the red bayonet. And if anybody moves in that hex, you have lose your conceal. So with that one guy going out to charge him, that right. removes the conceal. And I'll fire on him. Okay. I'll opportunity fire on him right there. So okay. he has two, plus he's adjacent, makes it three, plus he's moving, makes it four. Mm -hmm. Sure. And the turn ends, but the combat finishes. Mm -hmm. Two hits. Two hits. So he is shaken and reduced, and the turn ends. All right, and this guy is now fired, so we'll flip flip this one. Bam, bam, to there. Now we're in the reserve phase. Mm -hmm. I, I misspoke earlier. Vehicles get three movement points. Infantry leg units only get two. If they're within three, they only get one. But there is a minimum movement rule, so I'm going to move my one up to that little hill thing there with these mm -hmm. guys. And that's all I got for reserve phase. How about you? The only people I see you could do anything with are right here. Would be right here, yeah. Uh-huh. Could move them over here with this guy. Sure. Why not? Let's finish this in a blaze of fanatic glory. All right. Six, I got seven. Yep. Yippee So I Ooh, draw a card. I Reinforcements. So I draw another card. And that is what I wanted to see. I can put that there. I get two actions. First one I'm gonna fire and use grenades. Add one HF when attacking the same assault mm -hmm. or adjacent hex. Or so adjacent. I'll attack this hex here. I'm going to shoot at, you've got one guy, I'm going to shoot at the RPD. So okay. I get two, I'm adjacent, makes it three. The grenades make it four. So I have four on the RPD. I get nothing. Nothing. Less than nothing. How about nothing. that? That was a good for you, Mister RPD. That's Soviet ingenuity right there. Yep. Sir, should we bring bullets next time? Going pew 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 doesn't actually work. 
Okay, that was that was my first action. Okay. I get a second action. He does get a fired marker. It's all true. Flip. Pew. It's fired. I will play this rally card, which because these guys are elite, a rally card works as a bloodlust. Okay. So I will play the rally card to rally. Uh, not rally, but bloodlust those guys. Okay. So I'm going to play the reinforcements. Draw another card. <laughs> I'm going to take the shaken off him because I can rally him, right? Well, for bloodlust, yeah. And yeah. you don't even have to put an ops complete. He's good to go. Yep. He is ready for combat. One, two, three, four. I got an in turn that goes up there. All right. Oh, that's that's useful. I will just for giggles. I'm going to play a fire card um, with this dude and this guy, but not the hero. Uh, and I will shoot the RPD. So it's two, four, and then it's within two, so it goes up to five. Okay. This guy's special ability is he's a tactician, his ability, not his power. So it lets me redraw one card. Okay. Flip it. Nothing. Another card. Flip it. One hit finally on the RPD. Another card. Nothing. Another card. No, there shouldn't be. There shouldn't be an event for. Okay. Uh, another card. Two hits. <laughs> mm-hmm. Second in turn, another card. Nothing. No. And I'm gonna I'm gonna redraw that one because of his special ability. Tactics comes over. Tactics killed him. He so killed now he's him until he died from it. He's dead, Jim. Now he's dead. Yeah, that's nine card draws on him. It's See what nine. we need is an S fast. <laughs> so I could just run in there and be like Blow everything up. All right. But you know what? I am going to get rid of these two. So Okay. Who's so I'm there? going to... Oh, it's Bedar. Yeah, he has the sniper, which shot. is... He fires the unit and adds one to the unit's attack. So... Okay, the deadly shot at the top right. Fire the unit, add one HEF to the unit's attack. But it ignores is... terrain, so it would be two attacking this guy. Just okay. the dar. Yeah. All right. Damn it! How many cards you pull in here? Really? Two. They just pulled them together. They're both hits. All right. So shaken and stirred. Shaken and reduced. I drew event one. Oh, which is? Mujahideen boldness. Remove any administrative marker from two Mujahideen units and conduct a fast move with them. Ooh. Oh, nice. It says and, in the rules, yeah. administrative counters like fired and terrain modifications like smoke have no stacking limits. I don't see. Right. It says counters. under four additional terms. It says admin markers, these are counters that assist in tracking game functions, yada, yada. Examples are fired marker, moved marker, ops complete, barrage, concealed, shaken. Okay. So you can remove any administrative marker from two Mujahideen units, and then you conduct a fast move with those units. All right, hold on. Let let me just see if I got a fire to ruin his day. 
Uh, my mouse is lost. Okay, nope, you're good to go. Run. Okay, so he gets four move, right? Rubble is, uh, not rubble. Two. I'm sorry. Uh, two. Rough, yeah. So it's going to yeah. be two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, I put that event up, and I now I continue drawing. Yes. So I'm going to draw, draw, draw. Well, I got a reinforcement. I'm going to put that up there. Draw another one. Mo, you got a victory point. <laughs> well, they made the ridge line there. Well, you have to get oh, the to go G. past it. You have to, get you past have to, get to go to past G. it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. sorry. G, and if I don't have an LOS to him. Right. Which is why you moved your RPD back. Um, but if I can get up in here. Yeah. He's not going to have a line of sight. Well, I'm going to have a line of sight to you if you're over here. Yeah. You can't hide um, behind him. As a matter of fact, I want a line of sight to you if you're right there. Rough doesn't give you a cover. Huh? Rough blocks line of sight between leg units. All right. It degrades it between um, vehicles. But it's leg to leg in this case. It is leg to leg. But you've got a height advantage, don't you? All right, I got to figure out what to do here. So hold on a second. Just mm -hmm. hold your horses. A uh, fast move. I'm going to take this dude and, and run after my guys. Two, four. I'm good. That's it. I'm done. All right. All right. So I'm going to draw. Second oh, second win. win. Second oh. win, Mo. Second win. <laughs> That's what I was hoping for. But unfortunately, no. Now I could do this one. Do the Muj have artillery? I didn't think they would. In the SSR, it says Mujahideen player may not call artillery strikes. He or okay. she may treat any artillery action as a booby trap or a let's get them. See this SSR below. A booby trap is something you spring if I move, if you happen to have that card and I move into a building. I'm not in a building okay. right now, but you could use it as a let's, let's get them and move those two squads yes. right there. Which is what I was thinking of doing there. So, one. Okay, I'll shoot him right there. Okay. I'll play a punishing fire. Punishing In fire. There, so it's two, three, plus your moving is four. Let's see what happens. One hit. Two hits. In turn. In turn and nothing. So um two hits. So he stopped dead in his try. You got a light wounds? Yep. So it's one hit. Shake him. He, he's just shaking, but he is not stirred. But he's ops complete. He is ops complete. And there are three end turns out right now. And this guy, one, two, three. And this guy gets a fired on him. Oh, and that's punishing fire. I get to shoot a second time. My bad. Okay. Hold fire on. single eligible unit only. Fire twice. Target may retreat between attacks. Okay, the retreat must end with the target unit further from the firing unit than it started, and the retreating unit may not retreat into an enemy hex. Mark a retreated unit with a moved marker. If it's already moved, mark it with an ops complete marker. If it was already ops complete, the unit may not retreat. He's already ops complete. So I just, I'm going to shoot him again. I get two, uh, three because of how close I am. Fair enough. It's, are we all on the same page? That's fine. Uh -huh. And that is one hit, so that's it. Um, draw, bam, draw, another bam. Pretty but didn't we say play to three, Mark, this turn? Yeah, oh we did. God, yeah. Um, yeah. Or just go on to four. <laughs> 
Yeah, sure. If it's okay with y'all. That's fine. And just for giggles, I'm going to play Second Wind. You keep getting those second wins and I need them. Yeah, I know. When you were talking about it, I was going, well, I know who has them. <laughs> and that comes off. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and let's see about discarding. I'm going to discard everything but your fire. <laughs> exactly. And my other second win. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's threatening. Okay, go ahead, Mo. You go. <laughs> That's funny. That's it. And All turn. Right. And of course, now I get a move. Um, I think you still got a reserve, though. Right? Yeah, you do have reserve phase. Is it who has the initiative? I can never remember. You did. It's always I you. never got the initiative. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I am going to. Move him up to there. Must nix at this point. Move him to there. And that's all you need to do, really. Yeah, because now he can't get out of sight. Mm -hmm. To you shake that guy. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah, because hey. what I was going to do if I got another thing was I was going to try to move. If I couldn't move, then I was going to throw the grenade out, toss a frag over here. Oh, all right. I mean, that's all I could have done because I, if I didn't have any moves, uh, second wind, I should say, then I couldn't move any of these guys over here. Now, the so, grenade is a support card, so you have to have some kind of fire to go with it yeah. or other way around. It goes with a fire. Yeah, it would have been that and that. Okay, yeah. But the the thing I was thinking before was I needed that second wind to try to get these guys over here. If I could have done that, then it would have been good. But because these, I it would have been nice to move these guys, but they're so far now, this late in the game, that it would have been difficult to do. Keep in mind, you, you still have five turns left. Oh, I thought we were done after this one. Well, we're done for a night. I mean, it's three hours past my bedtime. But um, <laughs> scenario-wise, it goes eight turns. So we're going to call it at this point where we're not going to play the full thing. We have five turns to go. And where we're at right now, potentially, it's not a lost cause. We still have five turns. So the Mujahideen have potentially six points here, two points each to get over mm -hmm. here past this line. Yep. And if somebody can take care of this guy on the way, that'd be great because then he doesn't have LOS. So that's six right there and they need eight. Correct, Mark? Correct. And you've got two more. That got these two guys two over here. One. Yeah, there's two and there's a guy shaking. There's actually three units there. And if you get him, he's one point. Yes. I, I get no points for killing you, but you do get a point for each one of my uh, units you kill. Yes, which is why over here, this guy, I was saying, man, I wish he had a suicide vest because he just run in there and take someone out or hope to at least die gloriously. And there is still Badar there who could maybe snipe somebody. So yeah. there's potential for one more kill over here. And I've already lost three units, uh, two rifle and an RPD, but you don't get any points for those. The whole thing with this is really... And I did not manage cards as good as I could have running across. Plus, it also depends if you get those second wins, they make a huge difference because I could run up here three. Like if I get a fast move, I could run up like four. And then and then if you can get over here with these use the roads early on, that that's a good advantage, too. But if you got up to here, say, on your first turn and then you get a second wind with, you know, it, how many second wind cards are in the deck, Mark? That's a real good question. Two, at least two. At least two. I had two in my hand. Yeah. So if I had gotten two right there in the first turn alone, barring getting hit by opportunity fire, there's a potential that you could get, let's see, possibly up to here, the broken ground. Possibly. Possibly. It's in the true. first turn with, with, the, with the second win. So that just shows you how that can work, depending on the, how the cards get. And of course, if you play the cards smart, which I 
messed up a few things that I should have played, which I showed you guys earlier. I should have done response fires to you and stuff like that. The Pathfinder skill for the leader, one of your leaders has, is also a way to move. Oh, away. yeah, yeah. That's over easily overlooked. Mm -hmm. Yes. That. It lets everybody in his hex only spend one movement point per hex. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. That was a rush. He has the Pathfinder. That's that brown with the squiggly arrow. That is the Pathfinder skill, which would have allowed him to do one movement point per hex. Now, if you combine that with a fast move. Nasty. That's well, you're five still movement. Five movement point, but, but it's only one movement. One point. One right? point, yeah. So theoretically, at that point, if you had it, say you're here and there's nobody over here, they got wiped out. It's one two, three, four, five, or just one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't matter because you're not paying the movement costs to enter the different hexes. Right. So yeah, that's, that's huge. So that's another thing to keep in mind is to not overlook these special abilities of these leaders because they do have massive influence. So be paying attention to those things. And that's something that's very easy to overlook because of the symbology and everyone's just looking at numbers. Yep. But Absolutely. that's one of the nuances of the game, and it's really cool. So now I definitely want to play this again. Well, thanks a lot for all that information, Mark, and thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Really appreciate it, and hope you guys enjoyed seeing a little playthrough of 85. And don't mock me too badly for my bad card play, but it was a lot of fun and uh, glad to have uh, kind of gotten through about half the game. We still had five turns ago, so there's still potential that the moves would uh, come out with the win, but we don't know. You never know what the cards, what, what's in the cards there going forward, but definitely a lot of fun. And if you're curious about it, 20 days to go. So definitely jump on board. Okay. Thank you very much. I had a great time.